Bayam is blind, yet he can see. His condition is so paradoxical that it was ignored by scientists for years. Every now and then an observation comes along in science that doesn't make any sense. It's curious, it's inexplicable, it doesn't fit the established body of beliefs. Such an observation we call an anomaly. At that time when you had the stroke, could you walk? Mrs. Sinclair is convinced that her paralyzed left arm belongs to her husband. In an earlier time, she would have been dismissed as mad. Now, when you encounter an anomaly of this kind, the normal human tendency is to brush it aside, is to pretend that it doesn't exist, is to engage in a form of psychological denial and to forge ahead. Vilanyur Ramachandran is one of the world's leading brain scientists. He was born in India where he trained to be a doctor, but his fascination with the human mind drew him to Britain to study the brain and then to the world mecca of neuroscience, San Diego, California. Today, his interest in strange neurological okay. cases is helping him tackle one of science's ultimate challenges, the mystery of how the human brain works. Which one is wiggling? None. You know, it's not moving either. Okay. Simple tests. Here. In this first of two programs okay. about the scientific revolution that is transforming our Close view here. of how the brain works, Ramachandran investigates four bizarre neurological conditions. Each case is a detective story that not only reveals the workings of the human mind, but also raises questions that scientists once felt were best left to philosophers. Right across the Big questions like, what is consciousness? What do we mean by a belief? How does the brain create our sense of reality? I'll never get this star. I'm hopeless at this. Drives me absolutely up the wall. Peggy won't get the left side of her star right, however hard she tries. That's because the left side of her reality has totally vanished. What? excites me is I can pretend I'm Sherlock Holmes and try and figure out what has gone wrong in this patient's brain what's changed that accounts for the strange symptoms and this of course is a lot of fun to do because you're learning a lot about how the normal human brain works and how the activity of neurons in the normal brain gives rise to conscious experience and gives rise to the whole spectrum of abilities that we call human nature Soon after Derek lost his arm, he had a bizarre experience. When I first started shaving after my surgery, I would feel my absent hand start to hurt and tingle whenever I shaved this left side of my face. Derek was feeling his phantom limb a mysterious condition that causes amputees to feel the vivid presence of a missing arm or leg long after it has gone. Derek is in his early thirties. He grew up in San Diego and was set for a career in the US Navy when a terrible accident changed his life utterly. Thirteen years ago, I was involved in a motorcycle accident and I pulled the nerves out of my spinal cord up in my neck. They told my parents directly that I would never use my arm again and I took the opportunity to have the surgery. After my surgery, I sat up in the bed of the hospital and still felt the arm there, still felt everything there. And I'm looking down and I'm seeing nothing. <laughs> it was pretty bizarre. The more I thought about it, the more it hurt. The more it hurt, the more I thought about it. I really had no idea what was going on. About seven years ago, I was reading through the classifieds, and I saw an ad in there, uh, amputees wanted. I thought it was a joke. Open your feet up a little bit. Keep your knees bent. Don't do it stiff. So I called the number, and it was Dr. Ramachandra. 
beautiful. Woo! For Ramachandran, Derek's weird sensations raised tantalizing questions about the way we all experience our bodies. <laughs> that was good. Derek's call marked the start of a collaboration that continues to this day. If there is any one thing about our existence that we take for granted, it's the fact that we have a body. Each of us has a body and, you know, you give it a name, it has a bank account and so on and so forth. Uh, but it turns out even your body is something that you construct in your mind. And this is what we call your body image. Now, of course, in my case, it's substantiated by the fact that I, there really is a body with bone and tissue. But the sense I have, the internal sense I have of, of the presence of a body and arms and all of that is, of course, constructed in my brain and it's in my mind. And the most striking evidence for this comes from these patients who have had an amputation and continue to feel the presence of the missing hand. Yay! One of the first things that Derek described was the bizarre sensing of his phantom hand while shaving. Ramachandran was immediately intrigued and suggested a simple test. Derek, I want to touch different parts of your body and I just want you to tell me what you feel and where you experience the sensation, okay? okay. Close your eyes. You could feel that on my forehead. Anything anywhere else? No. Okay. It's on my nose. Okay. My chest. Your chest. Okay. I can feel that on my cheek and I can feel rubbing on the phantom left hand. On the phantom left hand, mm -hmm. in addition to your cheek. Mm -hmm. I'm going to run the Q-tip across your jaw and we'll see what happens. I can feel a Q-tip on my cheek and I can feel a stroking sensation across the phantom hand. You actually feel it stroking across your phantom hand. Mm -hmm. So here is a medical no. mystery of sorts. Why does this happen? Why would a person, when you touch his face, claim that it was also touching his missing phantom fingers? A few weeks later, Ramachandran visited Derek at his home to explain his findings. So why do I always feel that phantom arm there? The reason we think it happens is that in the brain, there is a complete map of the surface of the body. The entire left side of my body, the skin surface, is mapped on to the right side of my brain along a vertical strip of cortex, which we call the somatosensory cortex. Similarly, the right side of my body is represented on the left side of my brain. So every point on your body surface has a corresponding point on this body map. Now it turns out that the representation of the face on this map is right next to the representation of the hand. Now that's a bit surprising, as you'd expect the map to be continuous and faithfully represent the left side of my body. But it doesn't. Now imagine what would happen if the left arm were amputated. The part of the brain corresponding to the hand no longer gets any input, and it's hungry for new sensory input, so to speak. The sensory signals from the face normally activate only the face area that's right next to the hand area, but they now invade the vacated territory corresponding to the missing hand and start activating the hand region in the brain. And so whatever is reading those signals higher up misinterprets those signals. It says those signals are coming from the missing hand. So you experience the sensations as coming from the missing fingers, even though I'm touching your face. And this is showing there's been a massive reorganization of the sensory pathways in your brain after the amputation. It's as though there's been a cross-wiring in your brain. Which, exactly. 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 Yeah. I can relate to the fact that my brain has remapped Ramachandran's sleuth-like deduction that Derek's brain may have remapped itself is a powerful challenge to received wisdom about the brain. Now the implication of this is quite extraordinary because now one of the dogmas in neurology has always been that connections are 